to the first ever virtual book signing, crossed with a chat show, crossed with, uh, well, I don't know what it really is. It's kind of a little bit like uh, the internet equivalent of gene splicing. Your very own online uh, Dolly the Sheep, or something like that. Um, as you can see, I'm already assembling my very own Brady bunch of people. <laughs> We've got here Carrie Ann Philbin, who's completely awesome. Um, she's going to be chatting to us a little bit later on. Um, we've also got our party room, our 24 hour party people who are in there next door. It's quite hor horrifying, really, isn't it? But don't, don't, don't be too afraid. They're, they're, they're drinking Prosecco. They should be quite harmless once, uh, once we've got them under control. Um, and throughout the next hour we're going to see lots of happy faces we're going to have lots of people coming on to chat to you about how they use the internet and what they're doing online and any tools or resources that they can recommend and of course the reason that I'm here tonight talking to you about all of this is that if you have a look there my book I'm just gonna pick it up for a moment working the cloud this ladies and gentlemen is the official launch of Working the Cloud, the book. It's a signing event, so we do have a few victims, I mean, sorry, readers <laughs> coming on to have their book signed, and um, hopefully uh, I'm going to be giving away five copies as well, so hopefully if you fancy a copy yourself and you want to come on the webcam and have it signed and ask any questions of our wonderful experts, then you can do that as well. So. Um, now, one of the people that we're missing, actually, is Ian, um, Ian Forrester, who was actually uh, supposed to be joining us, he's one of the tech grumps, and he was joining us from a pub where he's about to play a game of werewolf, um, but presumably he's been eaten by the werewolf, and that's why he's not been able to join us, but he may pop on at some point during the very near future. Um, so first of all, I want to start chatting to Carrie Ann. Um, now, Carrie Ann, I, I, can you tell everybody first of all what it is you do and why it is that you're so interested in technology? Okay, so my name is Carrie Ann Philbin. I'm a secondary school um, IT teacher, which at the moment isn't a really popular profession. And generally, going into IT and being a girl is very, very um, difficult at the moment. It's very difficult to get teenage girls into IT. So um, I started a project called Geek Girl Diaries, and I was very fortunate enough to meet you, Kate Russell. And um, you very kindly gave an interview for a channel, a YouTube channel that I created to try and get more teenagers, especially girls, into technology. So it really is a problem, isn't it? I mean, there's this huge gender gap at the moment. And even though, at, I think at a young age, I did a, um, a, an event last year called Games Britannia, um, you know, and, and I think at a younger age, girls are really into technology and, and show a real propensity for technology. But then they kind of, it loses its cool when they hit sort of 13, 14 years old, doesn't it? So why is that? It's, I mean, so many reasons why that could happen, and you're absolutely right. Like, I don't understand. I couldn't understand why it was that such a small proportion of women out there who worked in this field, because my teenagers and teenage girls, they just love IT. They love using gadgets. Very creative with what they produce. They really enjoy it. And then when they get to kind of a GCSE age, suddenly there's a bit of a drop off. So I think partly it's to do with education and how we approach um, our subject and how we teach it to students. Um, but I also think there's a wider context to do with confidence. You know, girls in a classroom full of boys, they don't always feel very confident about what they're producing. And actually, they're better sometimes than the boys. So that's something that we need to get over. And also, I think there's cultural issues um, surrounding that as well. But like you say, I think girls generally, they do really enjoy technology. They do, and you know they are very good at it as well. You know we're 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 very good at problem solving and um, logic and talking about things as well, which is, I think is something that um, uh, you know that gets lost along the way at some point with the boys, so who tend to, as you say, be, be a little bit more loud and brash about it all. Um, but hopefully, you know, we're doing we're doing good work here, and we're hopefully encouraging some girls that to, to, that it can be fun and it can be, and it doesn't have to be pink to yeah. be enjoyed by girls. Um, it can just be a lot of fun. Okay, now one of the things that we're doing here is we're, we're doing this book signing and we do we are supposed to have our first victim for the book signing um, on at the moment. So I'm just gonna, I want to, you all to say hello by the way to my wonderful moderator. I'm just gonna lift the camera off here and show you this. Hi. Hello, hi. 
Hello. He's my moderator and techie guy. Um, so I may occasionally speak to him throughout this hour and just say, what is going on? Um, have you heard from Philip? Because Philip is our first uh, in actually wants their book signed. Um, and he's not online yet. We've invited him, haven't we? Yes. Um, we haven't had a reply yet. So Philip, if you're watching and you're unable to um, join us for whatever reason, then make sure you leave a message. Um, I believe Farron is uh, monitoring the Working the Cloud Google Plus page. So go along to the Working work the Cloud Google Plus page and um, you know, leave a message. Um, let us know what's going on and why you're not there. Um, and we'll hopefully get you on at some point during the hour anyway, um, even if you're having some technical difficulties. Um, so we've got somebody who's leaning into the camera from the 24-hour party people room next door there. That's Andy Piper, who's a very wonderful geeky. Oh, I thought you were going to be chatting to us. You almost became my first party people victim. Um, can you demute your microphone? I, I can be, Tell us I what's can, going on in I, your life. I can be a victim. Um, I was just going to set something else. I was going to put a nice lower third on my screen for you as well. <laughs> But you caught me. Um, doing so, Hello. Andy, tell us a bit about what you do because you're 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 a very cloud-based person as well, aren't you? Um, yeah, I do. I, I work pretty much entirely exclusively in the cloud, and I work. I my my job is um, something called developer advocate or a cloud. What we call a cloud platform called Cloud Foundry. So that's for that's for developers. So that's for techies who want to build new apps and deploy them on on a, a scalable cloud platform. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm very much a techie, but I've been doing this stuff for. <laughs> Sorry, I, I'm only slightly distracted. Uh, he's, he's getting a I, lot of love in there at the Kate, moment. Kate, has, Kate has, um, has catered for us very well in here this evening, and um, <laughs> there are some very happy people around me. Um, it does it does look a little bit like you're in a Damien Hirst uh, exhibit there with all those butterflies on the wall as well, but. Um, I, I can assure everybody that the butterflies were there before we arrived. We haven't sort of. Uh, um, oh, Ian Forrest has just joined oh, the hangout, so we'll, we'll be talking to him soon. He's coming to us live. There he is, in all his glory. Um, although Ian he's is, very Ian still is, at the moment, he's the chief tech man. He's about to join. I'm gonna, I'm uh, gonna Ian is the chief tech crumb. So if you mute us, and I will leave you to your show. <laughs> Thank you, Andy. Thank you very much. <laughs> I want to be in that room. That so, room um, like Ian, that room is having far too much fun, actually. I might have to reprimand them for it later on. Um, Ian Forrester, hello. hello. Welcome to the Working the Cloud virtual signing. Oh, he's drinking a Cosmopolitan. Brilliant. Let's cheers. <laughs> cheers. Carry on with a cup of tea. Lovely. <laughs> so, Ian. Now, I've just, I, I introduced you earlier, and you obviously weren't here, so you don't, you've no idea what I said about you, but I promise it was very nice. Um, basically, Ian does a podcast called The Tech Grumps, and um, there's an awful lot of noise going on next door. Can we uh, stop yeah, the noise I'm next door? Okay, oh, is that you? Yeah, I would okay, no, of... that's fine. It's okay. you. I thought it was my naughty people misbehaving. So tell us what you're doing, okay, Ian, so... because you, you're, you're in this bar for a very special reason. So we, we're playing this game called Werewolf, which is here. Um, and so basically, um, the idea is that some people are werewolves, uh, most people are villagers, and you have to find out who the werewolves are. And we have lots of drinks, because um, it's happy hour until 11 o'clock, and um, we have lots of fun. So actually, there's some people here who, as you can see, Hey, hello! <laughs> Brilliant. Are we? So, so, so you. So, what is this? It's, a, it's an augmented reality. No, not augmented reality. It's, it's just a game, is it? Just a, a, an a, RPG a, game. No, no, no. It's it's just a game, a social game. Um, there's no RPG, no dressing up, nothing like that. It's just very simple, and it's great fun. Um, if you've not played it, then you need to play it. Um, some people call it Mafia, um, but we call it Werewolf. Okay, good. Mafia sounds like the um, Facebook game that was being played a while back, a couple of years ago. Is it uh, something Mafia like that, Wars. Mafia Wars? Yeah, not Mafia Wars. This is similar. This is totally. Not really? Yeah, we're actually sitting in a circle, real people, um, no technology involved. <laughs> It's good fun. Brilliant. Well, 
Thank you very much for joining us. Um, we are, are actually supposed to be going at 7.10, which is about now. We're supposed to be going live to a Nesta presentation. Uh, the Nesta presentation, they've got an audience of about 100 people. It's called Connected Collaboration. And it's being presented by my lovely friend, Gillen. Um, so Glenn Boddington, uh, they, I believe they're watching us right now waiting to be invited. So Carrie Ann, thank you so much for joining me. I'm going to ask you to, um, to drop your spot now, but um, I really appreciate you coming. And any last sort of tips or hints? What, what's your favourite website, the favourite thing you do online for our viewers? Um, this, exactly this, Google Hangouts. They're amazing. You can film stuff, you can stream it onto YouTube. So with my YouTube channel, that's how I do my interviews. You can um, collaborate on documents at the same time. It's amazing. And I think what you're doing here today is a great example of how powerful it is. So good luck tonight. I wish you all the best. Take care. Bye. Brilliant. Thank you so much for joining. We'll talk soon. Geek Girl Diaries. She is awesome, by the way. If you haven't looked at her YouTube channel, then do so. Um, Ian, how about you then? Quickly, before I ask you to drop off, uh, we, we'll just wait for, for hopefully our um, next guests will come on. They're queuing up now. So, Ian, very quickly for you, what's your number one cloud tip? What's the thing that you love doing online? You know what? Honestly, Dropbox and Evernote are awesome. Yeah, I could I could not work without those uh, those two things. Um, Google Docs is great, Google Calendar is great, but Evernote, Dropbox are essential. So you're basically uh, information in the cloud guy. You like to have your access to your documents, your pictures, your information, wherever you happen to be. Brilliant. Absolutely. I love one of the things I love about Dropbox is actually uh, there's a, an app called Dropvox. <laughs> um, which I have on my iPhone, which um, allows me to record an interview, um, uh, and it dumps it straight to the Dropbox, which is brilliant. If you, you know, if you, if, especially if you're in a dodgy situation, like when I was in Azerbaijan last year, and I thought I was going to get my phone confiscated because I was interviewing all of these activists. Um, it's quite nice to know that you're not going to lose your content as well. So. Yes. Brilliant. Okay. Thank you very much. Well, I hopefully we've got somebody queuing well, up luck. now. Good luck. And whilst Ian. Lovely to see you. Good luck with your. Don't get eaten by any werewolves now. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Okay, so that's the first two guests out of the way. We're running about three minutes late, but hopefully we've got the Nesta people queuing up right now. I'm going to set a competition for you. Um, and what I would like to do, if anybody would like to win a copy of Working the Cloud, um, ideally it'd be nice if you would come online. Um, and actually on a video camera and I can sign it for you live because this is a virtual book signing and so far I've signed no books um, but that's okay um, so, <laughs> but if you would like to win yourself a copy of Working the Cloud our first giveaway is going to be it's a website question so um, our website basically I've also launched the website workingthecloud.biz um, it's launched this weekend. It's a companion website to the book, and it allows you to basically keep up with all the latest news and opinion pieces. I'll be posting lots of new reviews there of all the current stuff as well as the book content. So go along to that website, workingthecloud.biz, and I would like you to tell me whose interview is featured in the news and features section as a full text transcript. Whose interview? is featured on workingthecloud.biz. The first person to post that answer in the Working the Cloud uh, Google Plus page, the first person to post that answer is going to win a copy of the book and hopefully you'll be able to come online and get it signed. If not, you can just say online. We might have a Nesta event. Um, feeling to us. Are they grayed out for me at the moment? And there they are. Hello, Nesta. I can see them. I can see them. I can't hear them yet, but we've got one cat we've got one Nesta. Uh, the second camera from Nesta hasn't um, yet come on. And who's this guy here? Hello, who's this guy? Hello, Kate. Can you hear me now? Yes. Is that Colin? Okay, can you hear me? Hey, it's I Michael. can hear you. Hello. Um, Gillen's uh, speaking at the moment. I'm just going to go and get the... It's Michael from Nesta. Uh, I'm just going to try and get the main camera, Gillen's camera, up and running. She's just in the middle of a Q&A session at the moment. 
So I'm just going to get her attention and get, get ah, you right, up and okay. running on the main uh, on the main screens. Good. Okay. Well, you do your thing, um, and we're, we're, so I'll just carry on me? chatting to the viewers. So, absolutely. So, can we uh, can we just maybe mute that for the time being, just so that while he gets that sorted out? Okay. So, as you can see, live uh, broadcasting doesn't always go as smoothly as you would want it to. Um, but this is technology, uh, you know, that is free to use and is out there at the moment. So, and we're really sort of sitting, balancing ourselves on the bleeding edge of it right now. Um, so uh, it's, it can be a little bit dangerous at times. We can get uh, we can get damaged. And I see Zoe Cunningham is there as well. So maybe let's jump over to Zoe Cunningham um, whilst we are waiting for the Nesta Q and A to finish. Um, and then hopefully, once we've spoken to Zoe Cunningham, we can come back to Nesta and see what they've got to say. Uh, I think Farron's going to nip next door and unmute the microphone because we weren't, we weren't going to let them be in control of their microphone next door. As okay, you can no, see, you they've had... Hey, there she is. Okay, Zoe, hello. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, first of all, can you tell the audience what it is you do and what your interest in technology and particularly the cloud is? Well, I'm Managing Director at a company called Softwire Technology, and we make uh, very expensive systems for a wide range of businesses, including BBC and The Telegraph. So what's so great about the cloud is that for small businesses, they can get the same quality of software that we provide to really large clients, but at a fraction of cost, and in many cases, it's actually free. Well, that's it, because you know, one of the things that I cover in, in the book, I think it's something like chapter four or chapter five, is free alternatives to office essentials. Because you know, if you're setting up a business for yourself, one of the first things that you can have to do is potentially fork out seven or eight hundred quid on proprietary branded software just to set up your computer. And actually, you know, a lot of people don't do that because they can't afford to do it and they end up going the pirate route, which is, you know, first of all, it's dangerous, it's, it's, it's illegal as well, by the way, um, but also you don't get any kind of support and you don't really get any guarantees about the, the quality of the software that you're downloading. Now, I've recommended a lot of open source tools, um, but also this sort of like renting things in the cloud when you need them, which are brilliant for collaboration as well, aren't they? Because you can, you can have staff littered around the country or even listed around Europe or the world and you don't have to pay for a piece of software for them, right? That's absolutely right. And what's so amazing, I mean the phrase that people hear quite a lot is software as a service. So it's software where you don't have to buy the whole piece of software that might cost six figures. You're kind of paying for a tiny fraction of it. Um, or a loss of size, they actually offer this software for free to kind of let you try it out um, and start using it and build up a business so you can pay them. Uh, so two really great examples of this are um, a site called MailChimp. So if you're starting a business and you want to send mail shots out to all of your users, MailChimp will allow you to import all of their emails and run a professional service um, to make sure you're not spamming people, to make sure you're not breaking the law on how you send out information. Another great site is Eventbrite, which if you're organizing events as part of your business, uh, it's actually free to use if you're not charging for a ticket. Yeah, it's brilliant. I mean, I'm using MailChimp for, for the website for, for workingthecloud.biz, and I want to do uh, um, you know a monthly newsletter of all the new content. Um, so yeah, absolutely down with that. And it's called you know sometimes they call it a freemium model where you sort of you, you have a certain amount of services free or you services up to a certain volume of clients free, and then after that um, you start paying for it. But you know, by then you've figured out whether or not it's going to be useful to you. So I think this is a really valuable thing about uh, about cloud technology now is it gives you that freedom not to have to pay up front and make a big commitment for something which actually might not work for you anyway, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, while you've got a bit of time, you were lamenting not signing any business. I thought maybe you could sign one for me. Hey, I would love to sign one for you. Yes, definitely. What would you like me to write? See, we, we have the technology here. Um, as you can see, on uh, one of the ca one of the pictures down there, so I'm going to flip over to the author biography page, and I can see now the Nesta audience may be almost ready to join us. So there we are. What would you like me to write for you, Zoe? Oh, um, anyone got any suggestions? In the first signing, first virtual signing. Yeah. That's yeah. a crisis they've been all night. Tuesday. Thank you for hanging out with me. For hanging out 
with me. I'm not going to say that to Alf Scott because he might actually hang out and that would just be bad for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> and that's Love Kate. Brilliant. There you go. So there is my signature on that book for Zoe. Zoe, thank you so much for joining us. And um Okay. You broke right. pain. And don't forget to mute the microphone in some kind of um, uh, uh, Eurovision Song Contest thing. I'm going to go live to Nesta now. And uh, Guylaine Boddington, who is standing at a podium. I don't, are they mic? Are you muted? We can't hear you, Guylaine. So I don't know if you're muted at your end, are you? Is she muted at our end? Yeah, Michael's yeah. channel. Can you hear us, Gillen? Wave if you can hear me. Do this if you can hear me. The magic of, of live broadcasting. <laughs> They're all staring at the computer going, I don't know what's going on. Hello, can you hear us? Um, I can hear Hello, you Kate. now. Hello, Gillen. How Hello, are you? I can see that you're not having any job. I can yes. hear you, yes. Hello, Kate. Hello, so you, you are at an event, Connected Collaboration yes, with Nesta. How are you doing? Do you, want to, do you want to tell us what that event's about? Can you hear me? Yes, um, we are in a group environment and we're talking here. There's lots of people in the room. So I don't know if you can see some of the people around. There's about 80 people here. Hello, and we're talking about um, connectivity and collaboration process. Now, Galen, you are a super duper. You know, you are you are Mrs. Teleconference, Mrs. Tele uh, Telepresence. Um, she, there is nothing that this lady doesn't know about connecting with people in a virtual space. And you did one of the the most amazing uh, creative projects that I've seen last year, which was your um, uh, the, w in the National Theatre, with where you actually go into this virtual world. Yes, we've just been talking about it and showing some video. And Joseph Hyde, the artist, is here with us too. And that was a special teleconference space telepresence and using connect motion motion sensor connect to link up people from four different cities from Paris London Istanbul and Brussels simultaneously she's only in old street by the way <laughs> it's crazy i mean the technology now that we have that allows us to connect yeah <laughs> You could have said that I was in New Zealand or something. I know, something. I know. You could have, we could have got away with it. <laughs> now, Galen, I know that you, you, you were sort of keen to get a copy of the book signed as well. So um, I have your copy, that, that copy of Zoe's, but we have a copy of my book for you there. Right. I so I'm going to sign that for you now. What would you like me to write in it? Anything in particular? Um, why don't you write connected collaborations forever? <laughs> yeah, there you go. Tugulin, connected you lost it. collaborations forever. Love, Katie. There you go. This is, I quite like the mix of old school with new school here, isn't it, right? So we're go, going <laughs> Not in the least bit digital, that, but um, there's your copy. We'll get that off to you. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you very much, Kate. We seem to have lost your image, but that's our fault. It's our technology end that's not quite working. So, But good luck for the rest of the launch. Oh. And good luck with the book. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining us. And it's lovely to see you. And we've, we've all got a leaflet for your book in our packs tonight. So hopefully there'll be some orders for you. So bye-bye, Kate. Brilliant. Thank you for having us, Nesta. Bye. Brilliant. So that was live to an audience of 100 oh, people. Lost that. Um, Nesta which is um, you know, just a brilliant example of technology working, kind of, 
um, to bring people together. And who's that I see greyed out? David is. So this is David. Right, okay. And where's our next book signing? Because we, we, we've lost Philip. Philip never made it on. But we should be looking soon to bring on, if you could bring on Hugo, because Hugo is waiting for his book signed as well. And I know uh, Hugo, I've met Hugo before, and I know that he's keen to come on. So David Eastman, hello, how are hello, you? Hello, I think I've unmuted my microphone. Yes, I have. Oh, by the way, I, I just want to help um, Ian out, if you remember, because he was explaining werewolf. Look, I have some werewolf cards. That is a werewolf. And uh, that is uh, another character from the game. And uh, the, where we got that is a villager. So that's what that that's what um, Ian w is doing now. Sorry, no relationship to me, okay. like that, but I thought I'd help you out there. As clear as clear as mud. Yes, okay. absolutely. <laughs> so David is another one of our wonderful tech grumps, and yeah. um, I've been on their their podcast uh, in the past, and so um, I decided to uh, to insist that the favour was repaid, and he come and help me. Yeah. Reciprocated, exactly. Um, tell us a little bit about tech crumps. Why, why do you do tech crumps? Because you'd think it was people complaining about technology, but actually you don't really complain about technology, do you? Well, yes, we do. But, but I mean, it's not just <laughs> complaining about technology. Yeah, I mean, it, the, the show was started off by people making sort of technical complaints about uh, why don't they do this properly and why don't they do do this that properly. Um, uh, there are quite a few sort of technical shows. Um, ours ended up to be uh, lots of people just sort of making jokes and so forth. But it, so it was, it was a lot more fun. Um, you can see more serious shows about similar things. Um, but yeah, so we covered a, we covered quite a lot of things, including you know why, why doesn't this feature work on 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 Linux or something like that. And then it just sort of spread out. To, uh, to a general, long-lasting, being generally rude about all sorts of things, especially Apple, especially Steve Jobs, that we didn't like <laughs> people. Um, so yeah, that, that was good. And, and yeah, sort of people came on and off, a bit like what's happening now, but, but over a periods of weeks, not, not minutes, um, and, and would come on and rant. And so we would let people rant, and that, that was what people like to rant about technology. Probably means they love it, but you know, ranting is good. Exactly. Well, ranting kind of denotes a passion, and I think if you have a passion for something, even if it's a negative passion, then that, that's, a, that's a good thing, because at least you're caring about it and feeling about it. Now, as you know, I've written this book, Working the Cloud, and um, you know, it's, it's a collection of everything that I, I, I've kind of collected over 10 years, all of these ideas and tips and tricks, and I, th I hope that it's aimed at people actually who, who are complete beginners, but also to intermediates. So what I want to ask you is, what is your number one cloud tip? Well, I'm, I'm going to give two, because my... my, <laughs> um, my as, I'm a, as, as I'm a developer geeky person, so what, one of the things important to me is code. And I'm going to be brief here, because I think most of the audience probably won't care about this. GitHub. Now, you'll have heard of this, and this is where all us... All us Cody geeky people, we store all our open source code, and GitHub is very good for that because it's both social and it's actually useful. Comparing stuff, joining stuff, collaborating, wonderful. But um, something I find pretty useful these days is Lanyard, and that tells you about all the conferences and meetings that otherwise you probably wouldn't know about. And one of the simple things it does is it allows you to log in with Twitter, so it makes the assumption that most of the people on Twitter you have similar interests to, uh, which is absolutely true. So, you know, if you know someone on Twitter and they're going to a conference, you think, well, actually, that might be of interest to me. Whereas other sites that do things like saying the people on the people you know, you like their music. Well, that's not true. I might do, but probably not. But uh, I find Lanyard very good. So it, it combines sort of tele uh, discovery, which is a very important thing web services about telling you things that are going to happen and allows you to sort of join and tell people oh I'm going to turn up to that too so it's a mix between search and collab uh, search collaboration and discovery those are the sort of foundations of web web services and obviously the cloud as well brilliant it sounds really good I mean there's a really good tool that I saw as well called book rx which was actually on webscape on the BBC a couple of days ago um, which is you know, it's similar. It pulls information from what you speak about on Twitter and makes book recommendations, Ooh. not based on what your friends think is good. Yeah, yeah. Because let's not. face it, our friends don't always have the best taste. 
Um, but that's not why we're friends with them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. So, um, but but yeah, it it looks, it does an algorithm, it works out from what you say and who you follow and the things that you talk about and things that you you, you engage with. It works out what recommendations that should make you based on Oh, right. I think library thing does something similar, doesn't it? That's a book, and obviously book service. You go on, you you say what books you like, and other people who have read the same books will suggest other books, and that ends up to be another, again, it's a good sort of, discovery service to find out what other books uh, sometimes by subject sometimes by uh, author sometimes by topic that you're interested in that's a very good that's a neat little tool too excellent good good suggestions good suggestions okay i can see hugo maybe waiting um who i believe is our book signing who's waiting hello. to come on hugo hello can we hear you go have you got are you muted my dear I may not be now. Hey, there he um, is. No. <laughs> so, Hugo, I actually met doing a hangout um, at Simply Business um, uh, earlier on in the week, or last week, I think it was by now. Yeah. Um, so, thank you so much for joining us. Tell us a little bit about who you are and, and what it is that you bring to the table. So, um, my name is Hugo. Um, I work for Simply Business as my day job. Um, and Kate was with us last week doing a hangout. Um, and personally, um, I've been working on sort of a cloud-based uh, virtual assistant, uh, which I call Simon, spelled C-Y-M-A-N. Um, it's, it's kind of a, a dream I've had since, um, uh, I guess, you watch something which is fictional, and I wanted to kind of bring it to life. So we have Iron Man, we have Tony Stark, he has a digital assistant called Jarvis, who's he's helpful, but he's also sarcastic, and I thought, I can do this. So I started doing it, and now it's an app, and now... I spend a lot of time in it outside work, so yeah, so uh, that's brilliant. My... Thank you. Well, it's it, and it works really well as well. I mean, I love the way that you can speak to it in a very natural voice too, and it's kind of like got a bit of a personality. Yeah. Um, it always feels a little bit forced with Siri, you mm. know, like that kind of like slightly uncool friend that you didn't really want to take the party with you, but came along anyway. But. <laughs> <laughs> Like, Simon's a bit cooler than that. <laughs> that's what you put it, yeah. Actually, that, that's what the reviewers. I mean, I haven't developed it. I know the shortcomings of Simon more than anyone, um, including the things that series better at. Um, but those who are kind of reviewing they, the things that you mentioned uh, um, kind of seem a bit cold. Uh, they like the fact you can personalize Simon. You can name it what you want. It doesn't have to be called Simon. Um, the fact that you can, you know, you tell it things and it doesn't always kind of agree with you. Um, and people say up the sarcasm or up the, you know, up the disagreements because they like it and stuff. So, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. We we like things to have personality. David, what do you think? Do you, do you are you a are you a virtual assistant, voice controlled app kind of fan yourself, or is that a little no. bit too tech? No, no, no. That would be that would be a target of tech grumps. In fact, it was a target of tech grumps. Terrible, serious <laughs> stuff. Misunderstanding it. No, I, actually, the reality is it's actually really rather good. It's scary that it's it's officially good now. So mm. I'm interested. I don't actually I haven't heard of many sort of comparison services. So that, that, that's, that's that's pretty interesting that, that people mm. are working on other stuff. So uh, hopefully. Brilliant. Some... Well, listen, Ugo, you 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 actually bought a book and you want a book signed, so what would you like me to write for you in the book? I'm going to turn over to the author page to write my dedication to you, and you are our first official signing. Please. What would you like me to write for you? Um, I'd like to write... Um, hmm. To, to Ugo I... and Simon? Oh, yes, indeed, please, yeah. To Ugo and Simon, always online and available. Is it C-Y, you said, C-Y-A-N? Yeah, C-Y-M-A-N. Always online and available. That's not me. That's not me. That's Simon, by the exactly, way. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> There's a bit of an inside thing here. There's something that Simon tends to say. So, yeah, just to be clear. <laughs> Brilliant. So there you are. There's your signing, hey. just to prove that we are actually doing a book signing. Outstanding. Brilliant. Thank you so much for joining us, Ugo, and David as well, thank you. I can see my next guest is actually queuing up, so I'm going to bid you farewell. You can get back to whatever it was you were doing before <laughs> before you joined this madhouse. Um, I know we're running a little bit behind schedule, so thank you so much for joining no us. No problem. No problem. Good luck. Good thank luck. you. Good okay. luck. Have a good one. 
So next, I know I can see down there, sitting in the corner, is John Ferguson. Hello, John. Have we got some volume on John? Well, it's funny because they, they, they're always not there to begin with audio-wise. Um, you look very professional though. You've got like a big professional mic set up and um, uh, it's all very professional looking, but I actually can't hear a, a word that you're saying. So is he muted at our end or is he muted at his end? You're muted at your end, I think, maybe. Is that it now? Yay, there you go. Good. Brilliant accent. So John Ferguson <laughs> is a, a, a long-time uh, virtual friend of mine. We've actually never met in the flesh, but we're meeting in the flesh this Friday, I believe. Yeah, very excited. So John, tell us a little bit about what it is that you do and, and what your interest in technology and the internet is. Well, actually, at the moment, I've, I've got a very boring job running a, an engineering firm, but... Uh, I think my, my, my technology background was uh, to do with mobile technology. I did a, a PhD uh, at the University of Glasgow on um, scalable crowdsourcing type systems. So, right, um, okay. It was, it was mostly like crowdsourcing is mostly one person just asks lots of people, can you do this? And um, I was trying to build systems where you could do that, but you could also say, Actually, I just want one very specific thing. Could you go and get that one thing for me? And I was trying to make it so that you could you could kind of get the really specific things and the really the really broad things as well. You got very involved in the cloud with me in in crowdfunding with me over the Christmas period because we were yeah. we were involved in the Elite Dangerous. And for those of you that don't know, um, Elite Dangerous was the game that got me into technology and probably you as well, John. Right back in nineteen. 19- Something eighty four. You well, you were probably still. I, 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 was, I don't want to embarrass point. you, but I, I think I was slightly too young for elite. When it <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't feel at all old now. But yes, no, elite, elite was something that got me into technology back, you know, way back when I was a teenager. And they ran a crowdfunding campaign over Christmas, and um, and I'm now doing. I did a Kickstarter to write a piece of fiction as well. And in your fiction, you, you we, we we both kind of like had parallel wishes to be writing fiction and doing creative stuff like that, haven't? We. we have, although I, th I think you're you're going to be doing better than it with me because you've already got a, a, a dedicated 800 uh, readers of your next book. So <laughs> I know. Well, that's the crazy thing, and they talk about copyright and um, you know, and the and the the new model for copyright in a digital age. And for for me, really, I think crowdfunding is one of the real contenders because if you are a creative and you want to get remunerated for a piece of work, at the end of the day, these days in the digital world, you can't stop people copying your work and sharing it. It's, it's virtually impossible. You can put all the protections you want on it, but someone will figure out how to crack it. So you may as well turn that to your advantage and actually use the publicity. And for me, if you want to know that you're going to get paid a certain amount of money, then crowdfund it, get that money up front, and then anything you make after that is a bonus. Absolutely. I, I think um, the, a, a really interesting campaign last year was um, Amanda Palmer, a musician. Um, she did a great uh, kickstarting campaign for her next album because she'd had a lot of issues with her uh, record label. But she's then taken what she's learned from that, and then she went and did a, um, a really great TED talk uh, for for any artists that are interested in this kind of thing, go to the, the TED website, TED.com, and look for the Amanda Palmer stuff. It's, it's a really interesting talk. It gives you a really good background into why, just as Kate's saying, it's a really good thing to look at crowdsourcing as a way to ignore the copyright to some extent, but to still get some money. It's, a, it's actually a very old model. It's like the, the old patron model that artists used you know, long before recording was even possible. Absolutely, absolutely brilliant. Now, I'm going to ask you, John, to tell us what is your number one tip, the thing that you really like to use that makes your life easy that you use online, your number one website, tip, app, whatever. I'm going to mute my microphone a second. I'm just going to talk over here and see where we're at with the, the competition and what's going to be. So, over to you, John. Great. So, welcome to the John Show. Um, I'll be taking you through this next part. Um, actually, I'm really sad to say that probably my favorite thing at the moment is Google Reader, and uh, I've been really sad to hear that um, that's disappearing very soon. Um, I hear that uh, Feedly is maybe going to take over as the next uh, competitor because it has a very good API, so your, your existing third-party applications for accessing Google Reader might still work with Feedly. Um, 
I think the other thing I'm just really interested about in technology just now is um, the the 3D stuff coming back with virtual reality because um, going back to like the Kickstarter campaign stuff, there was this uh, new virtual reality technology, the Oculus Rift, um, which everybody's getting very excited about. I'm very excited about it, and I really see this as like the next step in you know communicating in a very real way with people across the world, and they're communicating with you. It's, it's going to, I think, really create much more of a community atmosphere to the internet because there's going to be a much more visceral quality to what you're doing. Visceral. I love that word as well. Brilliant. You were always a good <laughs> one with the words. Thank you so much. There's some great tips there as well. Um, now, I, um, I believe that we haven't yet had anybody um, signing up for the book signing, for the, for the giveaway. So we just need somebody to go along to the website, workingthecloud.biz, and tell us who the interview is that's featured in the news and features. Do we have do we have a winner? Um, Gavin Rainbow, Simon Egerton, Gavin um, Rainbow, Peter and Anthony have all said Theo Capetus. And who was the first one? Gavin Rainbow. Well, Gavin Rainbow is actually coming on at seven forty-five for a book signing. He's bought a copy of the book. So what are you doing, Gavin? <laughs> You can't have two copies, that's just greedy. Um, we might sort you out with something else though for being first on the answer. So who was next? Simon Egerton. So Simon Egerton, are you on webcam? Can you come on webcam and get your copy of the book? If not, then, um, then tell me what you want me to write for your copy of the book. Now, John, thank you very much. Um, I'm going to ask you to jump off now. And um, it was lovely to see you. And I'm going to see you on Friday for the book launch. So thank Absolutely. you very much indeed. Great to speak to you. And thanks for your tips. You too, now, great. party thanks. room. Pay attention, party room. Um, Hugo, you can, you can jump off now as well, my, my dear. Thank you very much. It was lovely to see you. And thank you for having your book signed. It's going to be posted to you in, in, in the very near future. Um, party room. What I would like to do is I would like to run the next competition. And for the next competition, we need to look at the augmented reality app. Now, for this, we need to speak to Kate Mason. And Kate Mason is in the party room at the moment, um, the 24-hour party people. Now, I want to show you, if you haven't seen this already, what I've done is I've got uh, Orasma have made a brilliant... Um, app for me and oh, I'm getting text messages from oh, so Sue Black was going to come but she, she couldn't make it here and unfortunately Sue we don't have your email address um, here in order to invite you so if you could text me your email address Sue then I will sort that out um, but so the Orasma app basically what this does and I'm going to show it to you now Simon Egerton is our winner of the first competition. Now, I don't know if you can see this. You probably can't see it, but I have got an augmented reality. So as you point, if you download the Orasma app, which is free to download on iOS and Android, if you download that app and you point it at the cover of the book, you will get an augmented reality film. And what I want you to do for the next copy of the book to win is tell me, the first person to tell me on the Working the Cloud Google Plus page, the first person to tell me what happens when I rip the front of the cover off with the augmented reality app what happens next, what do you see at that point, then you will win the next copy of the book. Um, so we have our winner of our first copy of the book, Simon, I believe, is it Simon? Oh, you're, you're muted still, can we unmute you? And a microphone spot at the top right hand corner maybe? No? Is he still muted? Yeah, the, red button. the red microphone button, top right of your screen. Hello. Hello, there you go. Uh, is, sorry, Kate. Is it, is it Steve? It's Simon. Simon, hello, Simon. So you got it right. You, you, you were the winner of the first copy of the book. Yes, I think in second place, but as I hadn't already got one. <laughs> yeah, I think Gavin was just being a bit greedy there. Well, thank you very much. What would you like me to write? In uh, your book, I'm going to turn the page over here. Uh, to eBay bidder. To eBay bidder. No, to Simon. 
<laughs> oh right, okay, I get you. <laughs> Just yeah, I don't think you'd get very much to be honest with you. It's probably worth more not signed. Uh, not, well, you never know. Not soiled. Um, to Simon. And you can make the rest up, Kate. Thank you for hanging out. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to carry on that sentence. Thank you for <laughs> hanging out with me. And have you um, been following the launch activities around this? I mean, obviously you're here and watching, so you must have been following it to an extent. But have you had a chance to read any of the extracts of the book? No, I haven't. To be honest, I've been following your novel more closely. Ah, so this is the, the, the Kickstarter that we were talking about, the Elite Dangerous Kickstarter that we were talking about earlier. Well, there's yes. your, your signed copy of the book there. You probably can't see it terribly well in this light, but um, that will be on its way to you. Um, what we'll do, Simon, is we'll communicate via email. Um, I'll do that um, on Friday probably now, because as you know, as you may know, I do BBC editing tomorrow. But I will yeah. con consult with you to get your address somehow privately, um, and we'll send that off to you um, in the post. And thank you very much for taking part. It was really lovely to see you. Any any sort of tips of websites that you love? Anything that you, you love doing online? Well, it's an old one, but the Intel Museum of Me that you showed a year or so ago is always worth a look. Still yes. Out there. Absolutely brilliant museum of me from Intel, and that basically uh, does your Facebook um, uh, journey for the year. Actually, there's a really good Facebook um, Facebook show, TV show thing coming up in a webscape in the near future. So keep an eye out for that as well. Thank you very much for joining us. It's brilliant to speak to you. Thank you, Kate. Bye. Take care. Bye bye. Okay, good stuff. So um, we have now Kate from Orasma. She's in the party room, and hopefully she's wearing a crown. How lovely is that? Somebody's been playing with the. They've just <laughs> they've just released this the, the screenshots, haven't they? The Google screenshots. This is a brand new uh, part of Google, um, and we've now got Sue Black's email. So hopefully Sue Black. Black can join us as well. But so Kate works for Orasma, and Orasma are the people who did the app for me, which is just absolutely awesome. Kate, really quickly, tell us about augmented reality apps and what went into making that app. Hi, Kate. How are you doing? All going well? Yeah, well, we were running a bit behind schedule, but. <laughs> Not to worry. I thought the crown was quite like augmented reality, don't you reckon? So. Yeah. <laughs> So um, Kate and I sat down to talk about using the Orasma app to make a really cool um, augmented reality cover for the book. And um, as I'm sure everyone's downloaded the app to try it out and try and win that really cool competition, will have found out, um, Kate starts off by, by trashing the book cover. And what we're doing with the augmented reality app is um, we use image recognition to recognize that you're holding your phone over the, the cover of working the cloud and it then plays content based on what it sees. So that's what we've been doing with Kate, who's now officially gone, has disappeared. <laughs> um, <laughs> but the crucial thing is that not only can you add cool video content, but you can also click through to perhaps tweet about what you've seen or, or to even um, make a date in your diary to make sure you sit down and, uh, and read the book, not just, uh, not just play around with it. And uh, there's a crucial bit at the end, and I'm not sure if I'm allowed to say it or if the competition is uh, part of it. Well, I did say my, my question for the competition was what happens when I rip the cover off the front of the book, so we shouldn't give that bit away. Okay. Right, fair enough. But the cool thing as well is that you can always update the content. So in future, if you had another thing you wanted to talk about in the book after the launch, you can just upload using, because we work on a cloud-based CMS, you can just upload new content, serve it down, and away you go. You can use Erasmus to show you as much new and fun um, content as you like. So uh, that's another reason why we enjoy it so much. Now, augmented reality is is where it's at at the moment. If you could accept, we've got uh, Sue Black is there waiting to come online as well. And I want to bring Sue into this conversation as well because, hello, Sue, how are you? Now, Sue Black is awesome. She's writing a book at the moment about Bletchley Park, which she crowdfunded on Unbounded. Um, Sue, speaking with us now as well, is, is Kate from Orasma who made the augmented reality cover of my book. Um, what do you think of augmented reality? 
I can't hear you. Are you muted, Sue? Try your microphone top right hand corner. <laughs> not yet, not yet. Any minute now. Kate, can you ask them to bring me some more books in from next door as well? Because I've run out of copies to sign here. If somebody could bring me in a couple of copies of the book and maybe a top up of my Prosecco, oh. which is running a little bit low. <laughs> Have we got you on audio yet, Sue? <laughs> <laughs> we have got no we've got no sound from you yet, Sue. Hey, this is Elderflower Cordial you've been serving us all night, right? Of course, of course, yes. Sue, so, you have you it's your red microphone. Um, does it need unclicking on the top right hand corner? Hello. Above the above your image. Yeah. Hello. Hello, there you are. Yay! I couldn't find the right screen. Oh my goodness, I couldn't find the right screen. So oh. I was in the Thank you so much. Well, I know that you. Go on. Sorry, 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 Sue. You're you're Hi, you're not too technical, are you, darling? Huh? <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Sue's amazing. Sue's Sue probably Sue could out geek every single person in oh, this whole right. on the planet, pretty much. Yeah, She's yeah. writing a book about Bletchley Park. Tell us about the book that you're writing, Sue, and what's going on with that. Well, it is all about um, various campaigns to save Bletchley Park. So, as you know, <clears throat> lots of uh, ten thousand people worked there during the war, um, and everything was kept secret for a very long time. Uh, I think the ban was lifted in about 1975 for people to be able to talk about it. And um, so various people over the years have, have done things to try and make sure that Bletchley Park stayed open. Um, and so it's all about all the different campaigns um, over the years. Um, there's work done in the 90s where uh, the site was possibly going to be bulldozed. And so um, Sam Crooks, local councillor, managed to get the trees listed, uh, the trees, like a preservation order on the trees to... Uh, stop the site being bulldozed and you know I, I started uh, a campaign in 2008 um, to save Bletchley Park which thousands of people joined in with um, including you so thank you very much and uh, Andy who we just uh, heard from there and uh, many other people and um, the thing that I really love is that um, I think that social media played a really big part in um, kind of creating awareness of the importance of Bletchley Park and kind of bringing together lots of people who really cared about Bletchley Park. So, that, so the book is about all the campaigns, a bit of the history of Bletchley Park as well. Brilliant. And, and uh, as you said, I mean, social media really did play a big part. And the person who's joined us now is Jeff Alexander. Um, so, Jeff, hi. Thank you for joining us. Have we got volume from you as well? Let's just check before we go any further. Check your microphone is not muted to the top right hand corner of the screen. That's what's been tripping everybody up. I think you arrive muted for some reason. Yeah, you know, due to the there number of participants on the call, I think that's what it said. Perfect. Thank you so much. So we've got Jeff Alexander, we've got Kate from Orasma, who made the augmented reality cover of my book. Um, we've got Sue Black, who's writing a book that was crowdfunded on Unbounded. Um, Jeff, tell us just briefly what, what is it that you do and you're, you're really a very socially connected person as well. Yeah, I try to be. Um, essentially, I'm a digital consultant and I specialise in uh, search, social and uh, Google advertising. And uh, we met on, uh, on Twitter um, after exchanging a few tweets and uh, retweets and so on. And uh, so I'm quite pleased to be here, so thanks for the invite. Um, and what I promise to do is uh, improve um, companies, uh, local companies I do a lot of work with, improve their performance by 20% or their money back. So uh, some people for that reason have called me the, uh, the black belt digital consultant for some reason. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, There's not many things you get a money back guarantee from these days, but um, you know, that's one of the interesting things I think about um, crowdfunding. Sue, and maybe you'll agree with me because we've both had crowdfunding experiences um, recently. And you know, you are asking people to kind of put it out there and say, "Yes, I'm prepared to support you," um, just on the basis that you say you can deliver something. And it's kind of a big leap, isn't it? What, what do you think about that, any of you guys? 
Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I, it's quite scary, right? Because you don't know if it's going to be successful. So, so what if you put it out there and no one's interested <laughs> and then you look like a fool, right? So that could happen. Luckily, um, what happened uh, was that um, my book became the fastest crowdfunded book ever. So it was crowdfunding in just five days. And uh, actually, it's funny because um, a, lot, a lot of it was from people on uh, Twitter or people um, through social media kind of promoting the book and, and kind of helping me to raise interest. I mean, I th and I suppose because so many people have been involved over the last few years, um, you know, there, there's kind of like almost a, a captive uh, audience, I suppose, of people who are, who are definitely uh, interested in the area because, you know, they all played a part in making it happen, really. So, uh, but um, yeah, five days, it, it was just incredible. I, st I still can't believe that happened. I really can't. Crazy. And Kate, I mean, you know, you, I guess you guys have real experience with it in terms of, of the whole viral aspect of, of these kinds of projects because for you, you know, you create something that exists in a virtual world and unless people find out about it, you, you pretty much wasted your time, right? Because they can't walk up to a building and see it there. They've got to know that it exists and I guess probably social media and viral um, sharing is one of the key ways that, that that story can get out to people, right? Yeah, absolutely. One of the, actually, can you hear me okay? It's quite, yep. quite Larry in the party room, I'm afraid. <laughs> but, yeah, one of the crucial things that we really find is that when you've got lots of people, like you've been so active about tweeting, about downloading the app, making sure that people know how to use this technology that you're, that you're really pushing, um, that's, the, that's the crucial thing about getting people to interact with it. And I think you're absolutely right about the power of viral marketing. I mean, if people see a video online or engage with something, like in the, in the case of crowdfunding um, Sue's book, you know, it's really important because it means that they have a stake in it and they have a reason why they want to interact with it. Um, and I think that's that's been used really, really well in, in all of these examples that we're talking about. Brilliant. Well, listen, Kate, I'm going to ask you to, to mute your microphone and, and, and move away from the, the computer now. Thank you so much. Orasma, hello. They made my augmented reality cover. They are awesome. And in a moment, we're going to speak to Doug from uh, Ripple, who made my apps as well. But um, I, have we got any competition entries for that yet? No, we haven't yet. So that's fine. We'll, we'll, we'll figure out another way to give away the books, because we're reaching the end of the broadcast, and we've got a few more people. So, Sue, thank you very much for joining us as well. It's been a great talking to you. I'm really glad that you could you could join us. Now I want to speak to Jeff very quickly. Um, who have we got queuing up here as well? We've got Rosie and Gavin. Okay, so Gavin is a book signing, and um, oh, okay, I can see. Oh, the magic of technology. And Rosie Campbell, who's awesome. Uh, she's got the most awesome hair as well. Actually, you, we should have had Sue Black and Rosie side by side because they they're sort of like a matching set uh, there with their red hair. But um, so. Jeff, you you really are you're what I would call a power um, networker, um, and one of the things that that frustrates me about social media is that people believe that it's all about numbers, but it's not about numbers. It's about engagement, and it's about uh, you know sort of getting people to interact with you and and actually listen to what you're saying. It, but if you can get that right, and this is one of the things I talk about in my book, if you can get that right, then you can have a really powerfully strong marketing campaign as a small business and compete with the big multinational brands, but without anywhere near their marketing spend. How do you go about making sure that you've got quality followers and not just numbers of followers? Yeah, that's a very good question. and. Um uh, it's a question that's come up quite a few times before. You there? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and I think the key thing is to get a good balance. Um, one of the things that you can do is target the key people, key movers and shakers, if you like, in your industry sector. Um, you can engage with them. You can engage with their followers. You can follow them and their followers as well. Um, as well as looking at trends and uh, the subject areas that you specialize in. Just focus around those as keywords and those will usually bring up the key people, the key influencers for those areas. So um, it is a fine line because at the same time you want to follow people back and not be, well, 
a lot of the time you want to follow people back and not be too, uh, too rude about it. Um, but uh, at the same time, you know, you do get a lot of noise if you follow one back. Um, so it's about balance, isn't it? Well, this is it as well. I mean, one of the things that I'm really keen on too is making sure that I use Twitter in both directions. It's a way to talk to people about the work that I'm doing, but also I use it as a really, really useful research tool because I get curated content coming to me down the line. And if I follow too many people, that becomes really unmanageable. So you know, people often say to me, how do I get you to follow me? Well, the answer to that is you tweet stuff that I want to read, and then I will follow you. So brilliant. Listen, Jeff, thank you so much. I really appreciate you joining me and talking Friday. about the stuff that... And I'm going to see you on Friday anyway, aren't I? I shall see you on Friday, yeah. Excellent. Brilliant. I'm meeting all these sort of Twitter people who I'm going to have to go and sort of touch them and see if they're really real. Um, but let's bring on a few more of these people now. Um, Belinda Palmer and Rosie, I know... Um, so we've got two brilliant geeky girls here. And let's bring on Gavin Rainbow as well, because Gavin Rainbow is our third and final book signing. He's been very patient tonight. Um, he has... Hi. So, and who else have we got? We've got Ugo me? as well. Yes, Belinda. Hello. So, Belinda is... Hello. She is Mrs. Geek Girl. Um, so tell us about your work, Belinda. Tell us what, what it is that you're about and, and what, what, what it is you love about the internet. Well, sorry about the quality of this. I was just using my Microsoft Surface, and it said it doesn't. Google Plus doesn't support Windows 8. So I've had a technology fail this evening. Well, that's something that we get used to when we work with technology. I think if nothing, if nothing else, it makes you um, be a fleet of foot in solving problems. We we had all three laptops for tonight's event turn up without any web cameras. So. There you go. <laughs> I know, and it's always when I'm doing a presentation and the technology goes wrong, and then everyone's women and technology. It's always the way. Anyway, how's it all going? It looks like it's going brilliantly. It is. We're running over a little bit, I'm afraid, because um, I typically I thought that I would try and get as much as possible in, and I've got way too much in actually. But um, I want you to tell me really quickly what it is. Uh, you know, tell us about your work and and. What, what it is that you're doing, because you're doing some really interesting stuff with schools and education at the moment, aren't you? Yeah, so Little Miss Geek is our campaigning arm, and we are inspiring young girls to become tech pioneers and want a career in technology. The issue is that only 17% of the tech workforce is female, one seven. And that's going down each year. So Little Miss Geek is about bridging the gap between girls loving create, um, consuming technology and, but not wanting to create technology. And Little Miss Geek is about inspiring girls to take part in the next technological revolution. And there's a lot more um, happening in this area at the moment as well. I mean, we had um, Girl Geek Diaries, uh, uh, Carrie Ann Philbin was on earlier, and Rosie Campbell as well. Let's bring you in on this conversation because I know, Rosie, you're, you're a, a real role model as well to, to girls. Um, tell us about your geekiness and your geek career. Um, so I work at BBC R&D uh, with Ian, who was on earlier. Um, and yeah, I just I love technology. It's not something actually that I had that much interest in when I was younger, and I really wish there'd been something a bit like Little Miss Geek around to inspire me. But now, uh, while I was at uni, I really got into it, and um, now I've got a job in technology, and, and it's brilliant. Excellent. And what do, so, what do you, does it? We've got a whole raft of people now here speaking. Hugo's come back as well, so that's rather nice. So Hugo's a, a rebound victim. Um, does, and, and Gavin, now Gavin Rainbow, you're our final book signing of the night. Um, what's your sort of situation? What's your family life? Have you, have you got daughters? Do you know girls who are into technology? Is Because I know you're a big tech fan yourself as well. I am, yes. I'm, I'm an IT consultant. Um, well, that's what I call myself anyway. I basically fix computers. But I have got a daughter who's uh, 16, and she is into um, computers as well. Sorry, can can you hear me? Or, okay. Yeah, 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 yep. we can hear you. Yeah, so, um, yeah, she's into uh, computers and tablets and all sorts. So, And it's it's a big part of school as well at the moment. So, yeah, it's um, 
she's definitely a geek. <laughs> Sorry. Why do you, why do you think then? Because it seems to me that girls kind of like lose an interest. Belinda, let's come to you on this one. They they kind of they get into it quite early, but then they lose interest, don't they? Is it peer pressure? Do you think? I don't know if Belinda can hear me. Maybe she can't hear me. But look, we've got a real crowd now. This is brilliant. Gavin, I'm going to sign your book whilst we're waiting. Belinda, Excellent. if you if you catch up with us, um, then let us know what you think. Sorry, I... and she's ditching in and out. I think she I think we may be losing her again. But who else have we got there? Who's this? So we've got uh, oh so we got Doug the... now. Yeah, I was asking why you think it is that girls, because I, uh, I, girls... I can hear you now. Sorry, what was the question, Kate? Girls are into technology earlier on, but then they kind of lose interest a little bit. Do you think it's because of peer pressure and uh, it becomes uncool? Because this is what I've heard. I don't know, that question's coming through. It's funny because you're going. Uh, uh, you're obviously on a, a mobile phone, and we're getting you squished and squished and squared and squished and squared. So the biggest um, problem. Can you hear me, Kate? Yes, I can hear you now. Okay. So the biggest problem is the image problem. So young women and girls think that. Who can't get girlfriends and are, they're going to be isolated in a room all day and that's really the biggest issue that we're facing is how do we overcome that image problem and what we do is try and bring inspirational women um, and men like all the people you've got here into the classroom brilliant and now we've got Claire Benson as well who uh, let's bring Claire Benson in because Claire Benson everybody is a fire scientist Hello. which is just the coolest job title in the <laughs> world. Oh, I've heard so better. we've now got They're a line up here. Let's count it. We've got a line up here. We've got one, two, three, four geeky ladies and one, two, three geeky boys and a book. So there you go. I, I kind of like those odds. And the book was written by a girl as well, so that's kind of cool. Claire, tell me a little bit about your thing. And but, but before you do, Gavin, is, have you got anything particular you want me to write in your copy of the book? Because you're here to have it signed. Um, I can't think of anything at the moment. Um, just, Shall I just make just, something up and yeah, I'll do just, it whilst Claire... Yeah. Claire, tell us about your awesome job while I sign... Gavin's book for him. Uh, well, I am a fire and explosion scientist, and I do all sorts of different research on fires and explosions, and ideally trying to stop them happening. Uh, for the last couple of years, I've been working with the London Fire Brigade, trying to find out about deliberate fires and arson, and seeing if there are any patterns, and using some of the tools on the internet that's been made really interesting. Uh, particularly recently I've been using uh, one of the add-ons for Google Fusion tables where they'll actually heat map things and um, do intensity maps so I can overlay that with other uh, statistics like poverty maps to see if there's any sort of correlation uh, which is really exciting. See fire, to, to, for me that really seems like you know y girls need to know that they can be doing really cool jobs like that in order to get more interested in technology and in fact boys do as well right I mean you you boys here in front of me how many of you would like to to, to, to be a pyromaniac for your paid job definitely <laughs> yeah we've got one Gavin's a, Gavin's a one Jeff's a one definitely um, yeah now, very, I, don't very know, true. I don't know if anybody's uh, gone for the book Competition on the uh, Orasma app yet? Yeah, we've had a couple of replies, but we don't know if they're right or not. So, if any of you are waiting to find out if you've won a copy of the book at home, what we will do is we will take the first correct answer and I will communicate with you um, through social media over the next couple of days to get a book signed and, and, and to you. Um, I really quickly want to bring Doug in as well to the conversation. He's been sitting there patiently while everyone around him is drinking champagne. Um, <laughs> now, Doug. Doug. Doug is from Ripple, and Ripple, uh, R-I-P-P-L-L, -L, and they made my apps for me. 
And, um, you know, just to do, because I am completely, uh, you know, I'm the tech queen. There's nothing that I haven't done that is tech on this particular book launch. And so we have also apps uh, on um, iPhone and Android. And I'm going to fire up the iPhone one here. And what that does is it's an RSS wrapper um, around the content from the website. Um, so there it is. There's the, the app come up. So you've got the content from the blog that will feed through to there. And also the videos. Um, these are the full video interviews that I've done for the book. And they're posted there. You can listen to and uh, watch those videos on there. And also, eventually, there's a chat feature. So once the dust has settled after this launch, I'm going to be doing live chat sessions through this app. Um, now, Doug, you made this app for me. Um, how much do you think now, with people switching over to mobile phones and smartphone connections, how much do you think... If, if you're a small business and you want to reach an audience and let them know what you're doing, how important is it that you are inclusive on the app side of things as well, do you think? I, I think it's quite crucial. I think before we talk about a business, have a think about every cool startup that comes out of Silicon Valley. Can, can you hear me okay, Kate, actually? Yeah, yeah. You can hear me? Yeah. yeah. So, so you, know, you see the scenario where the kid, the kid sits at the table and says, I've just got my venture capital funding, I've got this cool new... Uh, business and it's called Blah. The first thing everyone in the room does is reach for their phone to test out the product. So it's not a mobile. They say, oh, never mind. I'll have a look in the morning at, at, at my desk at work. So if you're not mobile first, you're missing digital these days because we all carry a small PC in our pockets. So that, that's important. But then think about businesses. Does a small business need an app? Well, if you search for Sushi London in the App Store, what would you expect to see? He's suddenly sounding a little bit like Will I Am on a really okay, bad studio day. Yep, we're, you're back again. <laughs> yeah, back, back again. So if if I search for on, London Doug. sushi in the in the app store, what would you what would you expect to see as the top listing? A brand like Yo Sushi, but you won't because they haven't quite got themselves there. You'd see some of these smaller brands that have got an app uh, and are listed at the top of the store there. So they're engaging with a few hundred customers but very intimately with an app that sits on their phone, an interaction they've never had to date. So I think it's very important, but only if the price is right. And that's where the SaaS model comes in because you don't have to spend £10,000 to build an app these days. If you use a system like App Splash, which you've used for your app, um, you can pay a, a, a monthly fee or you can try a freemium model, of course. But for as little as £29 a month, you're in the App Store ahead of the big high street brands, which is incredible, really. Um, and, and that lends itself to the whole SaaS discussion, doesn't it? Exactly. Well, this is what we were talking about earlier. It really brings us back full circle to the whole um, aspect of social media and the way that it can open up the, 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 the competition, you know, you can compete with huge brands without really spending the same kinds of money. And there's a whole load of resources and stuff um, in the book which hopefully you guys will all buy and enjoy and get an awful lot out of. Um, brilliant. Doug, I'm going to run a competition next on the app but thank you so much for talking to us. I'm going to let you get back to the party room and because um, we're, we're already 15 minutes over uh, time and I just wanted to really quickly say a, a few more words to a few of you people here. So Gavin, I've done your signing for you. Thank you. Um, super to Gavin, thank you so much for all of your support and for hanging out with me because I know you've been a long-term um, follower of mine and supporter of mine on Twitter and social media. So, and I can't honestly, I can't thank you enough. You know, you all you Twitter followers get a dedication in this book. So I hope you'll read it and enjoy that because I really, it really is heartfelt. So thank you very much for joining us, Gavin. Thank you. And thank you. that book will come to you very soon. Okay. Thanks Take very care. much. Bye. Brilliant. Now, I just want to finish with the guys who are still here. So we've got fire scientist Claire Benson, Claire Benson, Bonson Burner, um, she should be known as, Jeff Alexander, and we've still got Rosie. Unfortunately, I think Belinda Palmer's fallen off uh, at the end of the world somewhere, or maybe off the end of the... Uh, off the Brady Bunch string down here. Um, can I just go through? And if, if you have any, if, if you've got a tip, a number one website or, or app or cloud thing that you like to use, Claire, let's go to you. You first. I'm going to have to be really obvious and go with Twitter. Actually, 
I've done a huge amount of networking on Twitter for work, but also just in my own personal life. I mean, I wouldn't be here if it weren't for Twitter, because we met at something through uh, Twitter that I ended up on. So it's a great way to explore people with similar interests and a great way to explore work interests as well. Past, I, don't, I think a lot of people see it as a personal uh, tool and not a professional one. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I couldn't agree with you more. It's really a two-way street. And, and I'm always saying that the, your Twitter experience is only really as good as the people that you're following. So um, I follow some pretty awesome people, um, of which you are one. So thank you very much for making my Twitter experience so good. Brilliant. Claire, thank you so much for joining me. Um, I'm going to come to you now, Jeff. Jeff, what's your number one tip for online cloud usage? So apparently, no, I'm frozen. Talk to this camera. Is it unmuted? So I don't know if you can hear me, but I can't see. I don't know if you can hear me. Oh, um, sorry. Yeah, I'm apparently, here. I've frozen on the other screen, yeah. and I'm not sure why that is. Um, mm -hmm. And I can't hear anyone either. So have we got any a volume coming out of there? Okay, I've adjusted my volume. I don't know if you can hear me now. I don't know what's going on. This is this is this is technology telling me that I've been on. Air too long, 15 minutes longer than I should have been, 17 minutes longer than I should have been. Yeah. Um, yeah, can you hear me now, Jeff? Yes. Did you, did you tell me wonderfully what was your favourite cloud app or service already? Yeah, um, this will give me a chance to be briefer because I was rambling a bit. Um, there's, there's a site called Odesk which is a great source of uh, finding um, good people. You have to do your due diligence, of course, um, to help out with the, the operations and the, the VA, the virtual assistant type positions as well. And I've been spending a lot of time with that. That's, that's really key for me right now. So that's probably a good one to, uh, to add as something different. Brilliant. And if you, if you are a social media marketer and, and you, know, you want to do well on social media, then this is definitely a man to follow and to pay attention to when he speaks. So thank you very much, Jeff. I really appreciate your coming along and joining me tonight. Um, Rosie, I'm going to um, leave the last piece of advice to you. Do you have any um, wicked tips for using online technology? Uh, so my favorite thing at the moment that I'm using is uh, called Trello. And it's everything you ever wanted from a to-do list website or app. And it's just really simple to use. Anyone can use it. You, you can um, put things in different colors. You can drag and drop all over the place. And I don't know about you, but for me, I'm much more productive if I have fun little things that I can tick off and move over to a done column. And then I feel much better about myself. So um, yeah, that's my one recommendation for project management and uh, being more productive. Brilliant. I'm a real list person, and the first thing I always do on any list, number one on any list, write list. Because then as yeah. soon as you finish writing the list, you can cross it off. It's exactly. No, no more satisfying uh, feeling than crossing something off a list. Brilliant. Thank you so much. As you can see, we've completely adapted. Um, I'm on a completely different camera because my machine has fallen over completely. Um, so um, I... I don't know if anyone's left in the Hangout other than me. I could just be talking to myself. Um, but listen, thank you so much, those of you who've tuned in. Um, if any of you have entered the competition, um, I will be resolving that and making sure that the person gets that. I've also got another three copies of the book to give away. So I will arrange, over this weekend, I'll arrange some kind of competition around the book launch for those three to go, and it will probably involve the app as well. So I can see myself now on the computer over there. I've got the, the Brady Bunch underneath me. <laughs> Everybody wave. Say goodbye. Party room. Say goodbye, party room. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you very much to my host here, the King's Head Members Club, who've been awesome listening this year's their space. Um, which is really quite amazing. You should come, if, if you get into the Hoxton area, you should definitely come and have a look around. And also to Perius, who have um, bit, very kindly put some money in the pot for some, um, for some refreshments over these next two 
two events tonight and on Friday night as well. So Pirius, Roger from Pirius will be there on Friday night as well. So thank you very much to everybody who supported me. And um, I hope you've enjoyed tonight's show. Um, I will edit it down and um, hopefully make a, a version of it that hasn't got quite so much rumbling. Um, but uh, if you've got any sense, I would go and open a bottle of Plonk and um, pour yourself a large glass of wine now, because that is certainly what I'm going to be doing. In the meantime, people... All the flower juice. And, uh, All the flower cordial. It's definitely not... Virtual. <laughs> shouting. Stay virtual, and whatever you do, keep working that cloud. Thank you, and goodbye. Cheers, <laughs> Ben.